Hey people, Intratir 353, events a stronghold, blue team. Exterminatus is a commando knob, infiltrating hero that shoots you, stabs you, and blows you up. Orky style begins in ranged combat with a twin link shooter. Alongside, Honest Ape TTV is a warp spider exarch, a teleporting hero fighting in ranged combat, great for capping and harassing with some powerful control. And rounding off this blue team is Rustam with a force commander, very good offense, fighting in melee combat, can also tank, disrupt, and support. We have the Dark Angels DLC recolored. Here are the robes and stuff, like yellow and black. Pretty cool. Red team, Black Ward, is a hive tyrant. A very durable hero walking through objects and cannot be suppressed with powerful support, disruption and offense. Begins in melee combat with a basic synapse alongside a couple of Eldar players, Alpha Legion with a Warlock, a melee spellcaster that leaps into combat from powerful disruption and support the Exodites elite scheme here. Three colored like red and gold. Pretty nifty. And rather than off the teams is disposable heroes with another Warp Spider Exarch on the east side against the Force Commander. Bolt Pistol doing some work here. Tactical Marine is doing some work. Scouts capping somewhere. There they are. In the middle. Events of Stronghold expect fast and frantic action with no safe power. We'll see. That was my goal when making this map anyway. Here comes Black Ward. Gonna harass this commando. He's trying to peacefully cap this contested power. They should have been facing the other way where they were capping, I guess. I'm not sure why the Termigants got so close there. That sloppy approach play from Black Ward. The stun bomb hits two squads where it really shouldn't have. Bormagons having to retreat. Sluggers already with their burner purchase. 20% more hit points. And a couple of power melee weapons. The Hive Tyrant needs to be careful. Maybe we'll see the rending talons to help control these sluggers early on. Double shooters moving up. No upgrades for the shooters then. If we don't see one soon, suggests we're going to see Storm Boys or Looters. Are always going to go down? Down goes the Hive Tyrant. I didn't give him a name, did I? We'll call him Diaz. Diaz is down. Some grenade action on retreat, maybe. These tactical marines taking a very circuitous route to melee that Warp Spider. Gets into a good position. Can they get the throw right? They can't. They, they threw it too far. Banshees couldn't get in there either. More battle equipment, though. Another grenade is possible. Force Commander coming in with a battle cry. Most likely, there it is. All these allied Eldar guys getting this damage bonus now. It's 5% damage bonus for each special attack he performs while the battle cry is active. He can get it up to 15-20% since it stacks up. Warlock with a fancy special attack after his destructor. Gets rid of Honest Ape in the mid. Shuriken Cannon on the way. Exterminatus with Storm Boys. Soon Warrior Brood is up for Black Ward. Heavy infantry with power melee weapons. But we're going to see the Barb Strangler here. Do they retain power melee when they get the Barb Strangler? I can't remember. Very strong anti-garrison weapon. So these guys will probably flee once they see it. Just a nice weapon in general to have. Just waiting for it to pop in here. Oh, but doesn't shoot the garrison. Shoots these guys. See that suppression on hit. And good damage if you hit all the models. Boom again. Might have to run. And they do run. These guys are blob capping. I have a little bit of miscommunication in the hive mind there. Double shotgun scouts for us down. There's one shotgun blast. They should wait for the Banshees here, I think, to do the other one. Nope. Both of them used on the Guardians. Now they need to back away from the Banshees, but they're going to take a lot of damage coming in here. Shotguns do good DPS from close range, but of course, scouts kind of fragile, especially in a 3v3 when three entire armies can start shooting at them. Shuriken Cannon is in play on one of the main roads here. Center has turned blue. West side, meanwhile. Storm Boy is getting stuck in there. Jump squad with power melee weapons, these guys. Being dealt with, though. Slugger's still in play. Again, Black Ward. Kind of bunched up a little bit sloppy here. Needs, needs to work on his separation a bit. Hive Tyrant is moving up, though. Did they get revived or did they repurchase? I think they got revived because the Warlock is here, look. Meanwhile, east side, grenade for the Shuriken. And another one. I think it's going to go down. Third grenade, that's it. Shuriken taken care of. Nicely done by Alpha Legion. Perhaps a little bit sloppy from Dispo uh, Honest Apes, sorry. They should have should have seen what was coming. They got those grenade icons for a reason. Three of them moving towards you. A bit too close to shoot you. Well, too close. Closer than need to get to shoot you. It means they're going to chuck a grenade in your face. Power bash here from Black Ward. 
Former Gaunt with Adrenal Glands. That'll help in those melee fights. Anything for Diaz, the Hive Turret, though? No. Halfway through level 1. Commando Nob is level 2. I hear Banshees yelling. Rostam just lost both of their scouts. There they are. It must have been Guardian Fire. Maybe they eat, ate a grenade, too. Although, Disposable Heroes doesn't have any grenades. I think he just got shot to death. Maybe they were trying to set up grenades of their own or shotgun blasts or something. Assault squad is on the field for Rustam. Now jumping away. Was that for the Emperor I just saw briefly on those guys? Maybe I'm just seeing things. Force Commander does have Artificer armor. Makes him tougher. And escapes death there. Allied Howling Banshee's helping him out there with a war shout. Assault squad get away without a model loss. But those scouts both had shotguns for Rostam, so that was some heavy losses. I'm not sure if they had a sergeant at that point. Are these Banshees okay? 44 hit points, they should be okay. Yeah, they're all right. Banshees here of Alpha Legion. Trying to chase down that warp spider who teleports away, then runs away. West side, commando levels to three. Had some help from Honest 8, it seems. And they're on the power. The power here near the natural VP. Very difficult to defend for the entirety of the game. Blackboard's going to need a revive again. Commando going to get a decap and they're going to get a full bash, maybe even a decap on that power. In the mid, Howling Bandit's on capping duty. Warlock's level 2. Any war gear for these Eldar fellows? We do have a heavy gauge death spinner for Honest 8. Help control the enemy heroes. We'll just mess with the squad. Orcs did not get a decap on the power, but they did get a full bash and they decapped the VP. 487 to 420 on the VP's top of your screen. Going to see a power bash attempt on the west side. 2v1 against Exterminatus. Going to need some support. I hear Banshees yelling. Is it here? It is. On the Assault Squad. Assault Squad are getting really low. Dropping a model. Perhaps lucky not to drop two there. We do have Flamer Tactical Marines. And Rangers getting shots in. You just saw their kinetic pulse knocking them over. Warp Spider should have been tying up the tactical marines, perhaps. Force Commander is angry. Bolt Pistol. Chain Sword. All that good stuff. Playing it well, though, is Disposable Heroes. Splitting and shooting and frustrating that Force Commander. West side, a lot of activity. They're not going all in on that power bash are they being harassed by banshees of honest eight but they are massively outnumbered here Hormagons on retreat path as well those Hormagons maybe should have, got, should have got involved a little bit sooner they were decapping that wreck point away with three models down goes the node here comes the commando maybe we'll see that special shooter in tier two thought about chucking the stun bomb but doesn't here comes sluggers Tier 2 for all, everyone, aside from Rustam, who've got more scouts up and more tactical marines up. Oh, from the drop pod here. Dropped in those tactical marines. They lost a model immediately. Not sure how. Were there banshees here? I don't think so. Maybe they ate a grenade as they walked out. 470 to 395 on the VPs. Here is Honest 8. What is the DPS of this thing? 35 piercing DPS. That's not bad. And a teleporting hero. Especially when you get that heavy gauge filament alongside it and they got torn up quickly how quickly those scouts got in after that jump 470 to 383 a lot of good scout play in battles is about timing those approaches when they got those shotguns following up an assault squad jump when everything's knocked over is a pretty well, good way to do it especially in a 3v3 when you have big army v army fights all the time Honest Ape, almost tier 2. Rostam still hasn't started their tier 2. They aren't floating though, they need more requisition as you can see. Wraithguard it is for Honest Ape. Blue team getting this power bash going again. On this hard to defend power. I hear Banshees yelling. Is it you guys? No. It was these guys from Alpha Legion. Falcon on the way for Alpha Legion. East side. Full power bash and a decap here. Nicely done by Rostam. Commander screening well for the scouts and the tactical marines there. Banshees kind of went into the bait. We want to try and bait his battle cry out. It can be tough when it's Banshees because they're not going to take Bolt of Fire very well. 
take very long. I guess that's the case with all tier 1 melee infantry though. Well, we're going to maybe wiping out. Are you going to jump after him, fellas? No, and there was a crippling poison there. Just in case they could have they tried to chase him. Stone Boys didn't drop a model. That is an orky miracle right there. Rostam still harassing this east side. There's the Falcon of Alpha Legion. Having a little bit of a moment there with the Warlock. It's because he's put his rally flag on his hero there. And it's messing with the pathing of his Warlock. 470 to 325 grenades. A nice idea. Disrupted the Force Commander. Might have actually saved those Banshees there. Colt Pistol shot might have been enough to get them. Rangers getting shots in. Here's that Falcon. They could get missile launchers and melter bomb and power fist and lots of easy to get well relatively expensive i mean missile launcher 35 power but very easy to transition into anti-vehicle for space marines needs to get that tier two first though three quarters of the way there ish here are your wraith guard wraith guard will mess up a falcon if they can get to it warlock's got the witch blade of kernis that'll help against the assault marines here comes Blackwall. Got a uh, oh, melee synapse warrior brood now. Abandoned as the barb strangler. Adrenal glands granting melee synapse and heavy melee damage, more health too. And a venom brood is in play. No ranged synapse yet. And there aren't any vehicles on the blue team. Was it worth pushing through? They're going to lose the power again with that push. Sluggers have their knob leader. Storm boys have their, have their knob leader. I feel, I feel like Diaz, the Hive Tyrant, needs to get rending talons or something. Maybe they think Cormagaunts with the Adrenal with the Melee Synapse buff is going to be enough to hold them off. But if those guys both go after the Warrior Brood, they're not going to last very long. And now we have a Weird Boy with that Warp Vomit that can really mess up Tyranids in Tier 2. With their infantry strong armies. Diaz is in there, gets a good special. Sluggers got messed up. Storm boys weren't really involved. They were bashing the power and a decap from the commando. They go down on retreat though. Get a sink kill. The pistol shot to the thorax. On the east side, Rostam continues to pressure the power. Sort squad jumping away from the grenades there. And looks like a full retreat, so they're going to get a power bash again. 2v1 against disposable heroes. Alpha Legion supporting the other side. Now needs to get back to the east side. Webway here. Any other webways I can spot? One here. Webways are infiltrated. We have Vengeance Rounds loaded in. And for the Emperor popped onto the Stern Guard for a, for a quick about power bash, I guess. Strange way to use your for the Emperor. Where's the flamer fellas? Oh, they have to run away. I guess they really want that power bash. Falcon now. Gonna be under threat. There's Banshees with the heavy melee weapon. There's those Vengeance Surround Stern Guard. And those Wraith Guard as well. And there's the Melter Bomb. I think they've got the Falcon. Should not have approached from the from the opposite side. 427 to 308. Down it goes. West side, power bash against blue. So both sides are getting power bashed and power harassed quite a lot. Although maybe a bit more success for the blue team. Although, I don't think that's true because look at this. It's completely uncapped over here. 411 to 308. Tank busters on the field for Exterminatus. Alpha Legion's Falcon, though, did go down, as you can see there. We have a Thunder Hammer Force Commander and Teleporter on the way. That's going to be bad news for this big throng of ranged Eldar stuff. He can teleport in and disrupt that entire blob. Hellfire loaded in for the Stern Guard. These guys can change their ammo types to combat all targets. Hellfire with, the, with damage over time versus light infantry. And the Flamer fellows still have their Flamer. Level 3. Commando still down there. No sign of a revive yet. Maybe that Warp Spider can go and teleport over and get him. Are you guys going to get away? There's no way, surely. 
Guardians go down. And they had their leader, I think. They definitely had their battle equipment. Grenades for the approaching Banshees. Nope. They were allowed to get in. Grenades now, though. Once they're committed, they went for the grenades. Got a couple of good hits. Capillary tower taken down. Does the weird boy have upgrades? No. I mean, still has that awesome walk from it anyway. 368 to 308. Center is turning blue. Been pretty even and competitive so far. Tank buster barrages. Weird boy not back as well. Those tyrannies got absolutely wrecked. Any war gear for Diaz? No. On capping duty at the moment. Double Dark Creepers for Alpha Legion. Which made of Kurnus Ethereal Slash just wrecked those Assault Marines. Are they going to get away? Oh man, they didn't even drop a model. Oh, they dropped one there. They dropped their Sergeant, actually. The Dark Creepers doing some good work against that Force Commander these guys have. Inferno PvP damage. I think it's around 15 DPS per model. Good versus Heavy Infantry, Super Heavy Infantry, and Heroes. And they have that pinning fire you saw there, suppressing the first commander, which is quite handy. Tank Buster Barrage. Scares off the Venom Brood, and we're going to get another Power Bash, are we, on the west side? Oh, Sluggers are capping. They should be burning down power, surely. Down goes a Kabiri Tower. What is this? It's a sneaky walk spider. Decapping Blue Team's natural, now fully upgraded in Enhanced Walk Jump Generator. Lower cooldown on the teleport and improved targeters for more range and more DPS. Pretty nice upgrade to have. Stormboy is level 2. Slug is level 3. The melee, the melee orc stuff has done well so far. There's Zap on the Hormagons. Jump to the Stormboys. Then jumps to the Weird Boy. Hormagons do get out of there. They've had a, a few clo close escapes so far. Oh wow, those guys opened up on the weird boy there. Good thing he retreated. East side is kicking off as well. Merciless strike, a really good merciless strike on that Eldar stuff there from the assault squad. That was nasty. Not sure they really have a plan for the force commander and the assault marines. It's tough. It is tough. Disposable heroes, I mean, does have the heavy gauge death spinner. I don't think I've noticed it being used though. They must have used it against the Force Commander, surely. I mean, it's a good, good thing to have. Should really help in those fights, but they seem, Rostam seems to be able to get through it and do damage. We'll try and bait the teleport and then use the control, I think. Carn effects on the way for Blackwall. Bomber boys from the Storm boys, and then they jump in after it. Improved rocket packs. Increases their jump range, which is a great buff to have for a jump squad. Smack. Force might have killed that guy pretty good. Smack. Kills another fella. Level 5, this guy. Grenades. No grenades. Gonna get revive on the Walk Spider Exarch of uh, Honest Ape. 254 to 289. West side. Commando still down over here. Alpha Legion down to double Dark Creepers, and that's it. They are... Sitting on a decent amount of resources though. Do you go tier 3 here? Or do you try to rebuild in tier 2? I'd probably rebuild it tier 2. Uh, missing out on fire prisms and, and avatars and D cannons though. But they it's going to be tough to go tier 3 and maintain a presence. Disposable. Under huge pressure here. Seems to get doubled a lot on this side. Sort Squad are level 3 now too. They can lose their power I think. West side meanwhile. Power was lost but here's a Carnifex Strangle Thorn Cannon on the way. Should have gone Thorn back I think. Against all this melee stuff. Go Thorn back. Just get in their faces. Extra hit points is nice too. But they've gone Strangle Thorn. I mean it's a great weapon. East side. The Sort Squad jumping out. That was a weird small little jump to spend your energy on. Who just ran away, I think, a bit. Dark Creepers doing their thing. Walks for the Sark. We've lost the indicator for them. Trying to approach cautiously. That's a double Tempest Barrage doing some good damage 
on those Stern Guard veterans. The Tact Marines now have a sergeant of their own. 250 to 285 on the VPs. Very, very close. Got all the gens down. Trying to use this uh, line of sight blocker. I heard the let fly, but I think they cancelled their grenade there. Piling banshees of honest ape on the prowl, waiting for anything to break through. Just pounce on them. Okay, the uh, commando, do you just rebuy yourself in the end? Maybe. What is this fella doing? Hiding behind a wall, all sneaky like. Banshee's leveling up. For just standing there looking pretty, I guess. The warp throw on the banshees. And there's the ethereal slash. Devastating melee attack. And there's the warp throw on the accessory slot. The love posturing looks like the orcs are gonna break the ice here by just running in brute force style. Commander's got a rocket launcher. That's an Autark being dropped on that garrison there. The stunning grenades marking her entry. Those guys do get away, but that was a good little push from the Orcs. Can Black Ward do something about it? The power on that side is already bashed, although it's been re-noded right now. Fire Prism on the way for Honest Ape. Tier 3 for Rustam. Looks like Alpha Legion is the last player in Tier 2. Which is understandable with all their losses. They got on War Tuck in. Did they get something else in? That I missed. They purchased Warp Throw. I'm not sure if they got something else. 250 to 234. Very close on VPs. Anything yet? For our buddy Diaz. Nope, no war gear for this guy. Force Command has been super effective so far. Level 6. There's those specials off the battle cry. And that is the levitation grenade thing. There it is. Anti-grav grenade. A great controllability that you don't actually see that often, the anti-grav grenade. Maybe it's expensive. Not sure. Not sure what the price is of that thing. Fire Prism then on the field of Honest for Honest Ape. Awesome fire support from long range with disruption, but it can be quite fragile. Tempest Barrage, just to get stuff off the cap there. Mando sneaking around with a rocket launcher. I'm sure with the Khan effects in mind, but he's having fun just messing with infantry right now. What is this? It's the Warp Spider of Disposable. Done a good job, actually harassing this uh, VP now and then. Oh, he just teleported away from it when I said that. He has got a few decaps on there, despite the pressure they've been under. Two to one for blue. Merciless strike. Grenades. Our oh, grenades came a little bit late. Or a little bit early, if you're thinking about the Banshee moving in there. Fire Prism doing the right thing so far and staying behind the army as much as they can. Commando with a decap on the way. Warrior Brood on the way for Black Ward. They lost theirs. Avatar for Disposable Heroes. Alpha Legion. Are you going to go Tier 3, buddy? Looks like it. Nob Squad is up for Exterminatus. Tier 3 Infantry. Could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anything in the game with upgrades. Makes them very expensive, but super effective. We'll see how they do. They are going to potentially be fighting an Avatar and Black Ward with Gene Stiller Brood on the way. These guys most likely going to get the Adrenal Glands again then. And it's a, it's a good way to fight knobs, but the weird boy really tips that fight back into the orc's favour if they can hit that warp vomit well. Maybe the Stranglethorn Cannon can control things, but it's not always easy to hit charging knobs with that thing. Rostam on the west side. I don't think we've seen them here before. Messing up some Tyranids. Oh, those Warrior Brood having a bad day. And they do not get away. Gene still is here somewhere. Oh, they're at base still. 2 for one against Blackboard. And uh, they should have got the hell out of there. This kind of fix needs to move. Nob Squad will tear it apart with that Strangle Thorn Cannon. Does not have melee resistance when it's got this thing. It's trying to get away. Diaz, the Hive Tyrant, is there trying to do some work. I think it's still worth getting Rending Talons for the disruption. 
if you had the warrior brood you could jump in with the warrior brood get that disruption and then use the seismic roar for another piece of disruption that would give the jinx a lot of a lot of time to get a dps in there's a rocks on the base but it was kind of wasted most things moved away a bit of a waste of a nuke there from exterminatus but i'm sure they were super excited to drop it on that big blob of stuff here's the avatar what's he up to well we're trying to get flank the knob squad there and they got messed up on retreat actually good work got the knob leader i'm not sure if they had their knob leader but he's down if they did fire prism still in the mid 227 to 112 blue team with the vp advantage but uh red team aren't done yet alpha legion is in tier three fire prisms getting got to banshees on it with their heavy melee weapon looks like it ate a haywire grenade maybe Picking off in the middle big time here. We've got a Predator tank. Tank Buster Barrages. Nobody can cap the mid right now. Avatar on the prowl. That is a warp throw. Oh, but they retreated out of it. And the Eldritch Storm does not hit. That was from... Who was it from? I'm not sure. If it was Alpha Legion or Disposable. Probably Alpha Legion. Trying to set it up with the warp throw there, maybe. So we've seen two pretty much wasted nukes so far. There's the haywire on the Predator tank. Can they get it done? Can they get it down? They can. Rending claws. Gene Sillers making short work of it alongside the warrior brood there. Very, very scary. Very, very scary. Tarana formation, which does damage on the spies, also grants pretty significant buffs to nearby Tyranids as well so that dark green synapse effect there it's like 30% more damage or something it's really good and you get a speed bonus a lot of people often discount the Tyranno formations synapse buffs they kind of use it as just a damage in nuke where you really got to use it alongside your army to get the most out of it D cannon on the field for Alpha Legion honest ape has a fire prism he did get away Alpha, sorry, Avatar being chased. Vengeance rounds being used because it's super heavy infantry armor. There's a Waiting Doom. Whilst I'm able to split and dodge. Did some damage to the power. Disposable Heroes. Look at the army Disposable Heroes has got. Quite commendable given the amount of pressure they've been under in this game. They've preserved their stuff well and able to get back into it in Tier 3. That warp spider perch is pretty good too. Maybe it was a, maybe it was a global call in. Crushing claws on the way for Diaz. We're gonna see full power bash probably. Maybe they're focusing on the force commander now. Here come terminators, I assume. Yep, assault terminators for Rustam. Start off with those thunder hammers and storm shields. Down goes the force commander. Did get the battle cry before they went down though. Oh, battle cry is 10% per swing, I think, actually, not 5%. I think it's 10%, because the sword puts it up to 15. That's right. I think that's right. Yes, yeah, so you can pretty easily get a 20% bonus off it from two swings. Avatar now for Honest Ape. Big brouhaha here between the Tyranids and the Orcs. Always a fun fight. Commandos down. Knob squad is away. They didn't drop a model though. Kind of surprised that they retreated when it was a juicy warrior brood here to mess up. Warrior brood doing really well against the sluggers actually. Gives them a big bonus to health, right? 65% more health. I swear that was like a 40% bonus at one point. 111 to 103 on the VPs. How are they going to deal with these terminators now? But they've got double dark creepers. They've got banshees. They've got gene stealers. They have what it takes to deal with them. But there's of course three other armies worth worth of stuff to also be concerned about. 100 to 103, 2 to 1 cap for the red team. Tactical Marine's gonna eat a lot of damage getting this decap. Look at that from double dark creepers. There's a wailing doom. They got the decap though, they got it. 
I wonder if Rostam is saving up for a Land Raider now with double Eldar on the enemy team. Avatar versus Avatar Violence. And we have a Warlock who's gone mental. Do I hear a rock somewhere? Providence is in. Just non-stop action so far in this game. Another Wailing Doom. Here come the Orcs. Lightning Claws are in for those Assault Terminators there. Bad news for that Avatar. Bad news for all of the infantry on the Red Team pretty much as well. There's a Wrath of Cain. What is Banshee's doing? Need to get out of there. There we go. Avatar's getting some hits in. And they still have those double dark creepers and stuff, I think, anyway. I'll check in a second. Yep, double dark creepers and double D cannons for Alpha Legion. 88 to 103. One big, well placed nuke in the middle here could change so much. D cannon is setting up here. There's a singularity. I don't think those sluggers are going to get far enough away. Nope. Ouch. Painful. How much damage it did on those guys at level 4? What was that? Oh, it was a warp throw. Oh, Assault Terminator's got the Avatar. They seem to be moving super fast there. I guess it was just their melee charge. 68 to 103. Fire Prism getting shots in. Zap thrown into the Tyranids as well from the Weird Boy who's still around. Where is he? Level 3. There he is running away now. Anything else for the Hive Tyrant? He's gone for Improved Synapse and Warp Field. I think should have got the uh, Psychic Screen. Eldritch. Not the best nuke ever, but it killed some stuff. Lord Tuck jumping after the Fire Prism with a Fusion Gun. Need to keep her moving. Need to stagger step. Oh, Avatar's there though. So close. One hit point on the Fire Prism and it survives. Holy crap. 65 to 89. Rostam's Force Commander level 7. Warlock is level 8. Level 5 Walk Spider, level 5 Hive Tyrant. The other Walk Spider's level 5 and a level 5 Commander. Hell of a game so far. Red team decapping the mid. There's a Haywire on the Avatar. Can he finish it off here? Rocks on the VP. Not able to finish the decap at the moment. I think they are. They're going to get the Avatar though. Down it goes. It does knockback on that death explosion there. It doesn't do damage, but it does, it does do knockback. Orbital bombardment from Rostam. So I guess we're not going to see another Terminator squad anytime soon. Decent hits there. And they cap though. Warp Spider Exarch is on it. I'm not sure what Diaz the Hive Tyrant is up to, just kind of hanging out. Tyranna Formation. Again, would have been much better used alongside an army push in the mid, maybe. I mean, it stopped stuff moving up a bit. Single cap for the blue team. And look at this. The Commando is on red team's natural VP. We see the Warlock trying to get onto blue team's natural VP. Looks like they're going to get a decap at least with Providence active. Grenade. It's not going to do anything. Oh, knocked him back. Did knock him back. Well done, Rostam. I always assumed Providence gave you knockback immunity, but I guess not. Did they actually cap it? They did actually cap it, the Commando. 65 to 31. Force Commander capping the mid. This might be it. GG says Rostam, they think it's it. I mean, Red Team still have sizable armies, but... I'm not sure if they can get to the VP in time. they got to get there, they got to fight over it, they got to cap it, and they don't have long... 65 to 15 on the VPs. Don't think they have the time, but they're giving it a go. Knob Squad runs away, level 3. 2 to 1 cap now. Fire Prism is going to stop them capping, but there's an Eldritch. It's going to one shot the Fire Prism, I think. Very close to it. Down it goes. Eventually, another Eldritch at the end. Absolute chaos. But Blue Team take it. What a fun game. Loads of fighting. I'm sure I missed lots of cool stuff. We had a level 5 Commando. Level 7 Warp Spider. Did anyone get level 10? I don't think so. Level 7 Force Commander. Maybe the Warlock did. Level 5 Hive Tyrant. Oh, Warlock got level 9. 
was pretty badass with that witch blade of Kurnus and a level 5 warp spider. There you have it guys, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.